Welcome back, sir. <clears throat> Glad to be here. Where's my pants? Yeah, we want to tell it. You don't need them here. You don't. We don't need those things here, Jim. You know, I, this is odd. This is very odd because we usually talk once every three or four months on the show. But I, I needed to have you back quickly because it, it was just literally hours after we did our, our Monday show that by Thursday this thing was blown up. And it wasn't just cyber warfare. We knew that that was in the cards. But they brought back Anonymous. What, what were your first thoughts when all this started happening? There are no coincidences, and there are no spoons, as I said to you on the, um, on via text. I mean, how crazy is it that last Monday we're on here talking about the history of Anonymous? Um, I say, you know, where's the Patriots? Why did WikiLeaks only ever target America? Why did Anonymous only ever target America? And I called out your Anon News by name, the Twitter account, because when I was an active member of Anonymous, that was one of the main sources. You know what I mean? That a trustworthy, we knew that this was a legitimate Twitter account, not some fanboy. Um, and I said, you know, they're literally all through the Hillary election, oh, screw Trump and vote Hillary and. <clears throat> So I started to see this pattern. I called them out by name. And magically, the announcement for Op Russia to attack Russia came from your Anon News. So I'm sitting here, like, pinching myself going, this is too good to be true. And anything that's too good to be true needs a, a stern looking at. And uh, we discussed some options. I'm sure we're going to get into that. Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. And I, I really just want to kick it around a little bit more because... You know, um, it, I, I, so eight, eight days ago, we're talking about all this stuff, and we're talking about the eventual co-opting of it by the feds, and, and now this obvious, it's just obvious that it's a left-wing digital Antifa rebranding, and um, and that's not, to, yep. and like I said, this is not to say, because it's ridiculous to even at the first, in, in the first instance, years ago, to say that this one entity called so-and-so speaks for all people with all their intentions under one umbrella. I wouldn't do that for a uh, an organization of people whose faces I can see every day. So this is a brand that's being worked, and of course a brand that could be co-opted. And for it to be operating like this, and for everything we know to be true about the, um, uh, the, the intelligence and the law enforcement community and what they've done, um, it, hell, it, it just seems very obvious to me here. I mean, I, I, uh, I've been wondering why they had ignored pandemic lockdowns, the, the censorship, martial law, bioterrorism, no. so much. and um, It's not important. No, it doesn't seem so. So it's just, uh, it, it just that's nuts. Now, as far as this Mark Warner thing, um, take us through the impacts of what a cyber attack would really mean for for just average citizens who don't know what's going on, who maybe don't even really use the internet outside of checking their email and and maybe a couple of websites. What would what how would their lives be impacted by a full scale cyber attack or anything like that? So there's this internet under the internet. Whether you use the internet or not, you're still affected by it because all the things are controlled by the internet now. Um, and it's called SCADA, um, or SCADA by some people, S-C-A-D-A. And basically, this is the control of all of the oil, gas, water, the street lights, as mentioned by Mark Warner. Um, this network basically controls all of the critical infrastructure of a country. It has been violated numerous times over the last decade it is piecemeal it is unprotected um it controls our nuclear reactors so when you think about it that way the idea that cyber weapons such as stuxnet um can be created to actually physically damage things in the real world we're not just talking about hacking your email anymore. Um, Stuxnet was a 
they say the the first cyber war weapon. Um, I, I highly doubt that, but it's the most public uh, because the NSA and the Israeli um, intelligence agencies um, got together to create a malware package that targeted the Siemens pro -lo um, programmable logic controller inside the nuclear reactors of the Bashir nuclear power plant in Iraq. And what it did was... Iraq or Iraq? I thought it was Iran. Iran. Uh, I said okay. Iraq. Iran. You're right. Sorry. Um, and what, what it did was it had four different zero-day um, malware pieces in it. Zero-day meaning that no malware scanner um, you know, virus software on the planet could detect it. And as a result... This was able to take the centrifuges inside the nuclear plant and have them spin at dangerous RPMs, meanwhile telling the people in the control room everything is fine. So they were completely unaware because it had hijacked all of their you know, instruments and it was turning their centrifuges so fast that they exploded, eff effectively destroying much of the, the nuclear power plant. This thing then got out into the wild. And it spread to many other places, oil pipelines, then it spread worldwide. Then some, you know, of course, other genius hackers got copies of it and then got the source code of it. And now Stuxnet, one of the most dangerous, you know, um, hardware hacking, destroying um, cyber warfare um, viruses ever written, um, is now open source. And there has been, you know, new versions of it, new iterations of it. But there are so many more that we don't know about. You already beat me to the punch on the Vault Seven thing. I'm, I was making notes before the show. Well, talk about and, it because I, I only I only um, scratched the surface of one thing that me in my untrained uh, you know digital eye could see is I was like, oh my god, they're they're talking about being able to put place fingerprints and you know frame anybody for anything that happens on the internet with this thing but you you might have looked into it deeper if you can go deeper please go ahead yeah so so this is called spoofing and spoofing is when you you basically pretend to be in another location so if i were to say say okay let's let's just do a thought experiment Say I wanted to participate in Op Russia, and I wanted to go actually hack some websites, not just DDoS them down. That is distributed denial of service. So what Anonymous is actually doing when they took down RT is they have this browser-based or-you-can-download program that says opt-in. Okay? And basically, people opt-in to using part of their internet um, to basically overwhelm a target with requests. So everybody goes and either goes to a website and says, yes, use my internet, or they download a program. It's called the laser and they, you know, turn it on. And then uh, somebody at the, you know, command and control center at a non HQ, wherever the hell that is today, um, can literally say, type in a website and hit go and suddenly a hundred thousand five hundred thousand computers ask a website to load 20 times per second wow okay that's called a distributed denial of service or ddos so this is what they were actually doing and this is why i was joking with you on the um on the text that i mean this is this is like <laughs> I mean, it's like humble bragging or soft flexing. It is. It's. It amounts to you know, smoke. You know, just nothing, because it's temporary. Yeah, it's it's a pain in the ass for the people who are working at RT, and they realize that you know all of their servers are becoming overwhelmed. But generally speaking, DDoS attacks on websites are just to shut them down temporarily, and the minute that they stop the actual attack, everything goes back to normal. I mean, with some cleanup and all of that. The difference with the Vault 7 leak is that you could launch something on the on the level of Stuxnet that did um, attack SCADA, you know, that did attack critical infrastructure. 
and then you could through the use of multiple vpns through the use of um ssh which is secure socket um shell uh it's a, it's a way to actually remotely control a computer so you could have a virtual private server running in another country that you just quickly set up encrypted vpn like express vpn um and connect to that computer through an encrypted channel and tell it to then launch the attack or you could put malware on a government um, agency computer and then launch the attack from there remotely that's what we were seeing in the vault 7 leaks is that the cia has these tools has had these tools for numerous years and other countries have these as well hell i know people that have them so being able to spoof an attack or pretend to be at a different location um it's no different than like whenever you you get a prank caller it's like a a a call spoofer um i can put in my number is frank's number because i have it and i take frank's cell phone number and literally call the cia and go you know i'm quite frankly and i and quite frankly i'm tired of your shit and i'm gonna blow up blah 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 and people do that but that's the idea behind spoofing is that you're pretending to be something you're not and you do this through changing the mac address of the you know the receiver or the ip address of the 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 originator of the attack and that way they could actually say well this originated in ukraine and they'll go up in front of a bunch of old ass congress people and you know the intelligentsia will go see server logs and then they'll go well i mean that's evidence to me okay so um, but but right right around there you were talking about you're talking about okay that that almost seems like a lot more extreme way of swatting somebody by call, you know, calling up a uh, the, the police or something and saying that there's somebody you know that's on a, a gaming stream that is doing something illegal, and just so that you can see the the SWAT teams come in and potentially shoot them dead in the middle of a gaming stream when they were doing nothing wrong. They just swatted somebody just swatted Tim Pool like three times in the last couple of months. But what you're saying right there, <clears throat> obviously calling up the CIA and tipping them off to somebody's intention to bomb something that could be big um and then but when when we're talking about a worldwide cyber war outside of ddos and this what would you think that the tools most likely to be employed between uh you know uh, state actors would be among each other um i can't believe i can't believe that it would just be relegated to to um uh, methods that are more along the line of really nasty pranks I would assume that it would be a SCADA attack. So let's break that down a little more. So it's supervisory control and data acquisition. Supervisory control and data acquisition. It's a system of software that hardware elements that allow industrial organizations to control industrial processes locally or at remote locations. Monitor, gather, and process um, real-time data and actually flip switches on and off to control physical devices through SCADA, supervisory control and data acquisition. Now, this controls not just street lights, not just the gas pumps and the, you know, um, it controls things like dams. Oh. Now, imagine if somebody were to launch an attack and decide to just open the floodgates on a dam. If they were to use that attack to, similar to Stuxnet, target 25 nuclear reactors in America and turn off their water pumps, like what happened in Fukushima, um, that there are so I could I, I could literally fill the rest of this hour just talking about the possibilities. Um, what if they were to go into let's say <clears throat> nasdaq and just change numbers randomly and then bank accounts of really big important people and just delete their entire histories um 
we're not lucky enough to have a fight club scenario where they just go and erase all of our debt. Um, but there are a lot of cases where that's what I would always have thought that anonymous would, would have done, (laughs) Uh, you know, go get a fight club situation where one day we wake up and everybody's debt has been just wiped away. I mean, that was Mr. Robot, but, um, yeah, that's that's never going to happen, right. and because it's too decentralized. And the bottom line is that if you were to see a cyber warfare, cyber pandemic of the scale that they're talking about, of course it would be cascading internet service provider and major backbones failing, um, which would lead to cell phones no longer working, um, and most people don't have like an old you know wired phone those would probably likely fail um if we got to a point where this all grinds to a halt um it would be similar to what the emp commission described if there was a high altitude nuclear um electromagnetic pulse or a solar flare like the carrington event that in the event that we were to lose control of all critical infrastructure in america they predicted that two thirds of Americans would die in the first six months. Jeez, in the first six months. Now I'm I'm saying that that's a conservative estimate because you know just the water issue. You can survive quite a while without food. You don't last more than about a week with no water when you know no potable water. And people in these large cities. Um, like yourself unfortunately uh those are the ones that i you know i'm most fearful for whereas i live in sumter south carolina i make no bones about my addresses on my on my websites um and where i live i can find clean drinking water a country boy can survive we'll be okay but if you're in one of these large cities where everything is industrialized where everything is run through SCADA um, then you're in some deep shit if this if this sort of scenario plays out um, because there literally could be a case where I mean say the only bridge out of town is up when this thing goes down <laughs> you get what I'm saying yeah um, you can't force it down and um there there's just so many variables there um you know just from the initial onset of you know gps satellites starting to fail to you know all of the automated services that you take for granted that you never ever thought of um start to fail you know truckers not being able to move anything ports will be shut down um you know, it's hard enough for me to find um you know, just the the basic necessities that w- that we as a family choose to eat um, because of Brandon um, and their massive failure on this you know worldwide economic scale. You know, by the the bio weapon released in China, of course, um, which was all part of this whole Great Reset idea, and that's where I really see all of this kind of converging. Is that you know the 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 controllers the bankers the, the you know the illuminati whatever the hell you want to call them um the illuminated ones from the ngos you know, they do very much want um a centralized global society that's easily controllable and people who buck the system people who don't buy into the system and so far um you know, China hasn't bought into the old system, as they put it. Um, the Five Eyes are a white supremacist group. So Australia, New Zealand, Canada, US, UK, they're a white supremacist of, you know, global terrorism. Um, and they're winning this whole thought war because you see Justin Trudeau acting like China. You see Vladimir Putin um, taking these bold steps because China wants to know, hey, can we go into Taiwan, you know? Go give it a shot, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, the, the 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 guy in school who's like, yeah, go go over there and punch him and then see how it works out. And hell, if it works for you, I know I can take him. Um, 
So I see so many different aspects of this that really concern me. Um, the nuclear option, while I think that, you know, a lot of people are heavily flexed on it, you know, just focused on that, I think it is a flex, um, you know, because Russia is backed into a corner. I don't think Anonymous has done really anything that I can see um, that amounts to anything more than, you know, smoke and, you know, fire and bark and dog. Um, so at the end of the day, I think they're still just banging the drums of war because the war hawks need that sort of thing. And I, 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 I want to get your feedback on this because I thought this was very interesting. One time many moons ago, I was offered, um, I got an offer to fly up to New York to meet a Russian millionaire who wanted to invest in Climate Viewer News. And I said, I'm interested. Let's see what happens. And when I got up there, um, you know, of course, my answer was no, because he wanted like 10 percent of my company. And, you know, he wanted to be able to, you know, have some say. And nobody's going to control this mouth. I mean, it's just no amount of money could ever, um, you know, work out for that. Um, but while we were there over the weekend, you know, he would stay up till like five, six o'clock in the morning. We would just have these lengthy conversations. And in this, I learned that he was ex Russian Spetsna. So he was a um, special operator for the Russian military. And he said something to me that I have not forgotten to this day. He says, and he holds up a dollar bill and he says, What makes this worth anything? And I, you know, I gave a couple answers course none of them were you know up to his expectation his answer was the only reason this is worth anything at all is because if anybody else says it isn't they'll be nuked off the face of this earth that fire and brimstone will come out of the sky and the american miller military will make damn sure you know this dollar bill is worth what we say it is and then you you look at this whole you know process playing out, um, plus you know Dar Schwab's push for a digital currency, hmm. and this whole Great Reset idea. So we've already had the you know the the cyber pandemic floated by Dar Schwab as well. So the, I've all you know I've kind of since I learned that maintained that when COVID fear starts to wane the next thing would be cyber pandemic or they'll up their game and, um, you know, literally just, you know, come out with something way worse. Because if you think that Wuhan is the only place where this shit goes on, there are over, you know, over 50 bio weapons labs in America, let alone the ones that were in Ukraine that they scrubbed from the internet very quickly because now, all of that was about to come to light. Um, so when you when you look at Ukraine and what's going on there and the the threats of a cyber pandemic and the ability for our intelligence agencies to fake a cyber attack while saying that if cyber attack happens, it's going to be hair teeth and eyeballs. That's that's the red flag that really has had me you know <laughs> Wuhan clan <laughs> Chet you so funny um, that's the that's the part that's kept me up at night I mean honestly for the last you know since, since this whole thing started popping off we were just going over the history of Anonymous last week and in less than a week it reactivated like Voltron it got struck by lightning and is all across the news and it came straight from the Twitter account we talked about last Monday. It's just too damn coincidental. Yeah, I I, I believe so. I believe so, it's so. Re- what do you think about that idea that the dollar only has value because of the inherent threat of our U.S. military? Well, I I think after a while, see, I think that after a while, there's there's very little that the the the, the U.S. military can do to prop that. That uh, fiat bill up. Uh, I'm I'm sure that from now, since we got away from 
from uh, gold and silver, or any kind of constitutionally mandated standard for our money, uh, we put it into commodities like oil and everything else. But the, the the thing here is that the dollar, whether it's based on some you know liquid gold or gold itself, has been so over leveraged by loans and interest to to uh, banks that are plugged into world banking conglomerates that really do not care about any kind of real. I'm sure they have all the physical assets that 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 could be mined. They are sitting on top of it. But this is really just about how can you over leverage multiple. You uh, world currencies and collapse them all so that the dollar is eventually gone, the euro is eventually gone. Everybody's everybody's gone, and um, and that 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 banking conglomerate that has been able to scurry away or scuttle away all the gold that you can find over the last hundred or so years can uh, can then issue a digital currency that that is really just like another monopoly, more monopoly money, and. And, and consolidate. That's really the only thing that that we have left of keeping anybody sovereign is the ability to to claim that your economies are sovereign and your decision making locally is 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 your own. I think that's it. After a while, I mean, obviously the American dollar being uh, uh, numero uno around the world was very important for a long time, and uh, and much of it through merit of the fact that we are or were the freest, the most industrial uh, in society, society, industrious society, uh, innovative, um, pro, pro small business, pro middle class. I mean, we really pro decentralized. Yeah, I mean that's that's how we started. That's how we really rose up. Now, obviously, after a while, um, if you you take that kind of a a mindset and you attach a quantitative easing uh, rocket booster to the back of it, I'm sure that you're going to create a whole lot more of wealth too. But then you're starting to mix in bullshit with the real stuff and it's diluted and eventually you're going to destroy the pool. You're going to taint the pool. The pool's got AIDS. You know, that, that's just that's just what, what it is. And I um nice anonymous plug. There. Yeah, I know. There's AIDS. <laughs> that's it. But you know the uh, that's where we are right now. Um, and, and I think that may, maybe at one point there was a way where people would be too afraid of American military might to ever say no to the dollar. I think it's more so st- saying no to the bankers who are behind things like the dollar, who are behind things like the euro, anything that is sa- that is funded. By the same private banking interests that are behind every central bank in the West is really the problem. No matter whose face is on the American $1 bill really doesn't matter at all. And the end of this this paradigm, the end of this, this, is, this their existence is really... It's um it's coming to a close right now. Uh, that that whole way of looking at things, they're looking for ways to transfer away from the dollar, which is why I don't know how big the cyber pandemic would ever be. Um, I don't know how um, people say that eventually somebody's going to to trigger a nuclear war. Could be, but um, what would be left of the world? I mean, you, you need people to work in the factories. Uh, I would have to. Im- I, I think that I think that you know, at the end of the day, like a lot of this, you know, digital currency, like people, you know, keep. I don't know. They're so confused that it's somehow a way to, you know, be more free. You know that you're somehow going to get free from the bankers in control. And my my number one concern from day one. Um, as as it pertains to cryptocurrency or any digital currency, is that you're basically creating a massive surveillance system that... I'll give an example. For all you weed smokers out there that aren't in a state where it is legal, I smoked weed for like 20 years. And every time... I paid in cash. It's not like I carried a credit card or a debit card up to a drug dealer and said, hey, hey man, scan that thing in. And the reason why is because you don't want that kind of shit tracked. Now, if you have no paper money, something like that could never occur. If you have, um, let's say you have a gambling problem or you're a sex addict or whatever your vice is, you know, that's your right now you have the ability to make that transaction in private. 
if all of that goes away, everything you do is tracked. There is no way. It's already hard enough if you wanted to go and just say, sneak away and get away without them pinging you on a cell phone tower and being able to track you somehow even if you thought you left your cell phone at home and you did all the things there's a way um you know like the on star there will they'll catch you on a facial recognition camera on one of these you know traffic lights so the point being if they have a one world digital currency we would literally be regressing back to the days of the Catholic Church where the greatest fear a person could have is excommunication from the church. And that church would be this new world order te of technocracy that controls this one world currency. Well, At well, any moment, they could say, Frank had... Two hundred thousand dollars. Not anymore. With the flick of a button. But what about what? this, Jim? I mean, there's a lot of people that would say, yeah, for, for perhaps if they start Fed coin up or something like that, and and that is how they they really start launching and enrolling people in universal basic income and these allowances, things like that, and converting all your savings into this federally controlled digital coin, and you have a wallet, et cetera, et cetera. There's still people that are going to say, well, yeah, I, I'm sure governments around the world are going to eventually start digitizing their currency, but what if we have our own? Uh, I mean, there's there's plenty of there's plenty of uh, coins out there right now. I'm sure not all of them are going to stand the test of time, but there are people who are going to maintain that there are ways to um, to to keep uh, to keep economies running outside of whatever coin they anoint. So um, agreed. But what about? Um well, you did give all that money to GoFundMe to give to the truckers, and um, no, that's not going to happen. You, get, you did give all that money to Gibson Go, but a hacker went and doxed all of you, and now you're all being harassed, and um, they're not going to let that happen anyway. So how much of that $9 million sitting on Gibson Go is actually going to make it to truckers who are no longer there? I mean, at the end of the day, if you have... A piece of gold in your hand can you walk into a grocery store and buy food with that can you walk in with your bitcoin or anything if the government then says anybody using non new world order federally approved worldwide government approved currency if you're caught accepting that at any of your businesses, you'll be fined, levied, thrown in jail. I mean, it is that simple. With the stroke of a pen, excommunication from the world, a social credit system unlike anything Black Mirror could even think of. Well, we know... We know it's not only going to be that, but it's going to be travel. It's going to be everything. The, the, the currency is only a very small part of what they have said that they want in these ID, these Gavi Institute uh, passports and, and I, digital IDs. That uh, your, your finances, personal finances, are only a little bit of it. Um, I mean, in France, in France, the, if, if you don't get your, your booster shot, by a certain time, then you're going to lose access to everything, not only just the cafes and all that stuff, but yeah. some people are be, some people in, in parts of the world are being barred or being threatened to be barred from getting medical attention. And this is supposed to be all in an effort to help people stay healthy. You know, I, I um, there's just so much. You know, let me ask you another thing here, too, because we, I want to I want to get you back to talk to you about your other specialty. And that is, of course. That is, of course, the the environment and um, weather warfare and, and, and all that other stuff. But um, when it comes to nuclear, and perhaps this, this might cross a couple of different categories that you're interested in, someone, um, uh, a few people have asked in, in the chat room so far about what at what point to do nuclear reactors, you know, what's the shelf life or what is the, the, the lifespan of an average nuclear power plants around the world. I mean, we, we entered the nuclear age less than 100 years ago, and so many 
countries in the world are have have been able to modernize in huge ways because of that. But eventually, these things are going to have to be dismantled, replaced, uh, properly disposed of. We know that the, the the half life of just one of those rods inside of those cooling pools is like God knows how many uh, you know dinosaur ages. But you know w- what are we looking at as far as? replacing that and uh, a world when it has to be all dismantled is it going to get better do you know anything about are we going to are we going to find free energy soon well the the thing about nuclear that that most concerns me is if i mean if you look at the hanford nuclear site or if you look at um chernobyl and uh, fukushima you know all of these scenarios um three mile island um you know when the accidents occur they are on such a large scale and they last for hundreds if not thousands of years people most most people don't even know this but anytime that there is a fire in the woods around chernobyl in the hottest zones that there is still radioactive plumes that go out for hundreds if not thousands of miles from there um and and this is this is the main concern i have with it so it's not when people say that it's the it's the green energy of the future because it doesn't release co2 there's nothing safe about nuclear it is just a matter of time it is no different than any computer server if you put all the health records onto a government database and then make it available online so that doctors can share all this stuff somebody's gonna hack it and they're gonna have your names your addresses and every single medication you take and everything that's ever been you know your all of your things there has never been a computer system that has not been breached at some point and if it has hasn't it will be so that's the problem i have with nuclear is that it's eventually you know it it it, it nuclear reactors could be completely clean they have thorium reactors they have all these different versions of them but every time it comes up and it, they, they talk about possibly making it a reality, they keep going back to uranium and plutonium and all of that. Because why? It makes nuclear bombs. Um, it makes spent uranium. It makes the warheads that, that we put on literally the A-10 Warthog 30 millimeter bullet to, you know, the, the cannon shells that we use in tanks. Um, and this radioactive spent uranium, depleted uranium, um, as they call it, it's the leftover uranium that they say is no longer radioactive, um, has left numerous birth defects all across Iraq mm-hmm. um, from the Iraqi war and le- led to Gulf War syndrome. So I had a big problem with nuclear. Um, and as far as you know, the free energy, I really think the future is in graphene. Um, I, you can't name a thing that isn't going to be replaced with graphene in the future. Um, a graphene chip would run a thousand, ten thousand times faster. There's this whole fake commodity going on with silver. We need silver for all of the computer parts and all of this stuff. When it could easily be replaced with graphene, which is a superconductor, which is made out of graphite, which is made out of just regular ass carbon. So if graphene is such a miraculous material, if it can make armor that is a hundred times stronger with these graphene nanotubes um, than any metal we've ever created, if it can create super batteries that can be charged in less than 30 seconds and last for a week, or if not a month, um, all things graphene that they literally just figured out that graphene can suck in more sunlight than the area of the antenna that it's attached to and that it could be used for um, solar panels um, so there's all of these different applications for it and then there's the creepy ones like you know graphene and in vaccines and in jet fuel and all of that sort of stuff um, but I, you know I really there always has to be a creepy version of everything huh there, there, if you, you, you a hammer can be used to build a house or 
break a person's skull. <laughs> so there will ne- I don't think that there's ever going to be an invention in history where somebody doesn't figure out some nefarious way to use it. I mean, hell, people put gerbils up their anuses. So... <laughs> I know Armageddon. Um, I, I, anyway. You know, it, it, speaking of not speaking of the gerbil <laughs> thing, but speaking of the other thing there too, you're talking about um, Chernobyl. That was one of the earliest, maybe one of the first three episodes that you you did with me on the air over here. We talked about the Russian uh, woodpecker, yeah, and um, and Chernobyl it's, and, it's in and Ukraine. Uh, yeah, you want you want to talk about. Uh, it's not cyber warfare, but that is a certain. That's certainly a different type of warfare in, a, in an age that is, uh, in an age that was still rising to the top of uh, everybody's consciousness. Radi- uh, the radar and um, and bouncing radio waves all over the place. And man, oh man, we, we should talk about that again one night, especially since Chernobyl's all over the news again. Yeah, and, and most people. You've seen this, and if you're if you're a video gamer, you've seen the Duga Three radar, the Woodpecker. It was in Call of Duty Warzone, right yep. in the mid- center of the zone. It's been in all so many. I mean, at least twenty video games that I've played, first person shooters. I'm a big first person shooter guy. Um, this radar is iconic, and nobody knows the history of it. And nobody knows that it was connected to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and that the CIA likely blew it up because it was accused of doing weather warfare over America. It's an ionospheric heater. It's an over-the-horizon radar powered by a nuclear power plant that was blamed for the deaths of over 130 people in America. Interestingly enough, it caused a freeze and the El Nino to pop up when it should not have. And then three years later, from 1983 to 1986, three years later, it blew up. HBO did a special on Chernobyl. And immediately, the Russian government came out and said, this is American propaganda. The CIA blew up Chernobyl. (laughs) And I had said this all beforehand, going, this is the, in in my brain, the most likely scenario is because weather warfare claims, because messing with space weather and setting up, you know, um, terrestrial standing waves in the Rocky Mountains, um, you know, and this is, I've got reputable sources on this, government sources on this, top level scientists saying this is happening. Um, And then, Magically, it blows up. So you know, in in, in, in Lee, uh, uh, Lee, Jim Lee, um, the the funny thing about this is not even funny, but I, you want to talk about more uh, synchronistic kind of tie-ins to then and now, and in other conversations we've had, is that you were just talking about SCADA, and you're talking about the the ability for uh, modernized cyber warfare to be able to inflict real physical damage on a uh, on a foreign location, on a remote location somewhere else, that from, you know, th- uh, thousands of miles away, you can find a way through malware to infiltrate a nuclear facility somewhere, and you can blind the people inside of the control room to what is a rapidly overheating centrifuge system and blow up all their operation. Here you have a a, a very early on, I, I, like I said before, it's, it's more on the radio frequency end of things and cyber, but still from a far away distance, you're, you're, you are positing that we were able to actually cause the Chernobyl meltdown. I think that the, the, the Chernobyl meltdown was more than likely um, an inside job, you know, that they infiltrated and either caused the explosion. Um, I, 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 won't, I won't really speculate on how the CIA could have pulled something like that off, but, you know, being able to sneak a person in, they, nuclear reactors are already very delicate things. Um, they design them to try to, you know, be pretty darn hardy. But if you go and you look at the um, the the website where they report nuclear events, you will see some crazy shit on a daily basis. It's 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 the uncomedy hour where you read that, um, you know, at some uh, nuclear power plant in America today, an operator was found. Um, in the break room and they had dipped a cup 
into the radioactive pool and they put a goldfish in that cup to see if it would grow an extra eye. Or um, they came in extremely drunk and fell in the pool. Um, you know, it, it you couldn't make this up on The Simpsons, um, let alone the fact that you're actually reading government reports. This stuff happens regularly. I used to cover it more often, um, the nuclear stuff, especially when I started, um, you know, being an activist around, you know, the time I got out of Anonymous, which was around the time of Fukushima in 2011. Um so it's interesting, you know, that most people don't know how bad the nuclear industry is. Um, but to, to be able to destroy a nuclear reactor would be very easy. I mean, we're talking as simple as tossing a hand grenade in the right spot and that whole thing. There's nothing they're going to be able to do past that point. Um, you know, and plus um, Chernobyl was a, a much older style liquid graphite Um not like a heavy water or you know pressurized water um, nuclear reactor, so th there there's a lot of factors in why Chernobyl would be very easy to destroy. Um, but when I listen to the both sides of the story, the HBO version and the Russian government version, both seem to ring pretty true. You know, um, there's a lot of truth in the HBO documentary. And I likely believe that the CIA did blow it up. And I mean, that's just where I'm at on this. Well, you know, we got we got to do more on this. It's it's just it's so interesting. And of course, now we uh, we're, we're in a new we're in a new chapter of all this. What if and who's got the capability to do what kind of stuff? And again, where it's the Russians again, it's us. It's it's uh, all the shadowy organizations in between. And here we are, just you know, sitting on the front porch, chewing on a root and uh, having a conversation, wondering what the hell the, the the powers have in store next. I can't uh, I can't imagine it's going to be anything less than exciting. So I'm I'm glad that we're able to do this all together, Jim. Anything you wanna you wanna you wanna conclude with or I have climateviewer.com up on the screen the entire time so hopefully more people go and uh, check out your work and tune into your live streams but how do you want to leave people tonight you know I keep thinking back to that wasn't it Edgar Casey that said the savior of the world will come from Russia yeah I was talking about that with Rob not too long ago and I keep I keep contemplating this and I'm like how does this end well and you know i feel like i feel kind of bad because you know we really got to get get into something like the you know music of the spheres of the vibe of life we are um because the every every conversation we have is just so damn dark and i mean this is the darkest of subjects you know the idea that you know the power could go out and cyber warfare that you know all the shit going on um but there's got to be some silver lining to this. And I hope that, you know, that we come to a place where we recognize the frailty of the, the critical infrastructure systems that everybody relies on and that we use that to diversify our lives and become. The point I'm trying to make is in World War II, we had these things called victory gardens. That the answer to killing globalism is to decentralize not just the net, but everything. That you should have your own victory garden. You should know how to get something locally. If you live in a big ass city and that job pays you well enough that you would willing you're willing to jeopardize your life because you're not going to have access to you know. You don't know how to hunt. You don't know how to fish. You don't know how to acquire water. You don't have any kind of, you know, survival seed vault or, you know, Patriot supply of food or you don't own a gun because you don't believe in them. Well, I hope that you guys will revisit that kind of ideology because, you know, like for me, 
my biggest fear is you know the canary islands blowing up in a tsunami on the way because i live on the you know right between the coast and the mountains on south carolina so we would have to get the hell out of here and know within the first 15 minutes that it happened and already be packing up and leaving other than that um we don't have to worry about very much but what i want people to think about today is we are free in our minds and we can be freer but we're not going to be able to do this if we continue down this road of relying on the apple phones and the google phones we need open source hardware we need open source phones we need open source everything that is decentralized and until we get to that place the centralization of power will only continue and the centralization of misinformation will too how so far without, how far away without from, without how, facts we can't make very intelligent decisions and that's really the biggest problem i see how far away real quick are we from open source hardware like that i don't because I, I i don't, I don't think i've ever heard anybody even mention it it's it's my dream um it's my billion dollar dream to meet elon musk and say bro man dude um graphene open source hardware boom and then he'll say why and then i'll say why and then he'll go high five man i'm on that and then he'll use and then he'll use nasa money to make it hey i don't care where the money comes from but it needs to happen because at the end of the day um the problem with every system on the planet is that they are designed to be infiltrated and if they're not, once you actually create a system that is closed and private and secure, that's when you enter the CIA and the NSA with their tailored access operations or the CIA, like the Vault 7 stuff you saw, that they will find a way to break it and not tell anybody. So there is no safety in a world like that. So that which can be destroyed by truth should be. I appreciate everything you always do for this show and this audience, uh, Jim. And I hope that a lot of people go, a lot of people go and uh, check you out. And and um, well, we got to talk afterwards. This has been a wonderful conversation. And yes, next time you come on, well, first of all, we have to go back around to weather stuff. And I like the science talks, but um, I also want to talk about the uh, the music universalis. I want to talk um, energy and spacey shit and we gotta we gotta just expand the night one night i'll, yeah. I'll, I'll pack a hookah for that night i'll find something to smoke on <laughs> okay good all right man well climateviewer.com jim lee thank you for everything my friend it's always great having you on and yeah, i had you it, twice in eight days yeah man it's it, it's it's a new record um if you go to connect.climateviewer.com you can find all three of my websites you can find my patreon my paypal my merch shop, all of my social media, everything's on connect.climateviewer.com. Um, that'll get you to all the things, my YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey. Um, and, you know, I, anytime, you, you would not believe how many Franklies, Franklins there are in my chat. And uh, every time somebody mentions you, I mention you by name and tell everybody, go watch one of the greatest shows on earth right now, happening seven to nine every day of the week. Um, I love you, brother, and I'll always promote you, and I appreciate you having me on again. Oh, well, I love you too, man. Have a great one, and all the best to you and the family over there, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk uh, We'll talk in a little bit. Thanks again, man. Appreciate it, bro. All right. Be yeah. safe. Yeah, be safe, everybody. Be safe. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Yeah! Remember... It would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.